Okay, it's 7 p.m. Nuclear uh, Council meeting, Monday, March 2nd, 2015, 7 p.m. Will now come to order. Do we have a roll call, please? Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Zambach. Present. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. Craybacher. Here. Mr. Mike Lowry. Here. All members present. 7 0. Okay, a uh, little housekeeping before we get. First, I'd like to say good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, we got a full house. If you would, please, if you have a cell phone, would you mind putting it on vibrate or turn it off so the, we don't have an interruption this evening, if you would, please? And again, thank you for calling. If you'd like to make a comment tonight, uh, number eight is comments from members of the public. So remember that. We will get to that, if you would. Bear with us. So now we'll have the invocation. I see the pastor's not here yet. So we'll have the invocation by Mr. Craybacher, please. Everybody would stand. Please bow your heads, please. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. We ask for your guidance. We ask for the Holy Spirit of peace to be in this house. Lord God, we ask for blessing for each and every council member, administration member, and every person in the audience. We ask for a special love that would be shown that our love for the city is great, our love for our state, our country. We pray for the people in the military, our police officers, and our firemen. We ask Heavenly Father, for in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Now, if you join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, we're going to use the flag in the back of the room. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, now I have action on the minutes of the regular meeting, February 17th, 2015. Seven. Thank you, then we'll go into the other. Did I have a second from you, Mr. Mike? Yep. Okay. We'll do the other one at second. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Reynolds, a second by Mr. Mike Lowry. No discussion. Any discussion? Council? Minutes for that? If you would, please call the roll. Mayor McLaughlin? Here. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm here. Yes. <laughs> Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Sorry. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Abstain due to absence. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Pass six zero to one. One abstain. <clears throat> Thank you. Now action on the minutes for a special meeting February twenty-third, two thousand fifteen. So moved. Motion by Mr. Craybach, the second by Mr. Zambach. Any questions on those minutes, Council? They're just long. That's all I got to say. They are long. <laughs> it was a long meeting. Pretty accurate. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybach. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Communications, any communications this evening? None this evening. Okay, we'll go into the city manager's report now. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I'd like to start out under the finance discussion. You'll notice our uh, finance director is not here this evening. She had made plans to visit family during this time period since she didn't get to go at Christmas. So I apologize for her not being here. Uh, if any questions come up that I can't answer, then we'll get answers from her when she's back on uh, Thursday. Um, I did want to bring to your attention, I had sat at your uh, desk um, tonight, uh, there had been some question regarding whether the Twin Creeks payment had been made, and I kind of made a paper trail so that you could see that it was made. Uh, on the top page um, is actually the 2014 tax budget, and you'll see that that proposed tax budget, uh, when that was submitted in the summer of 13 by Mr. Sexton, he did um, put in 61000 to be transferred to the Twin Creeks debt. If you go to the next page, which is actually our 2015 tax budget, you will see, if you go to the second column, 
the 2014 actual budget, there was zero dollars to be transferred to Twin Creek. So although it was in the tax budget, it was not appropriated. Um, if you look to the left, the first column, the 2015, we have appropriated $155,000 to be transferred to pay la the uh, unappropriated part from last year and then the total payment from this year. So, um, and then the final third page is uh, the statement of cash from your November 7th uh, City Council packet. And you'll see that uh, about halfway down, um, if you look at the numbers on the far left, 302, that's your Twin Creeks infrastructure. If you follow that across the line, you'll see that there was a payment made. We had uh, $15,600 collected year to date. That money is from the sale of the two parcels and also any assessments people paid. Then we also paid um, the 62584 um, to make up the difference of the $85,768 payment. Uh, because it had not been appropriated, um, we were in the red, $68,000 in that fund because it had not been put in the budget originally. So, but the payment was made. Um, I hope that clears up the question of whether it was made or not. Um, that was really all I had regarding finance. And we'll move on to service discussion unless people had questions. Uh, your other sheet, I do have a question that you had handed out, talking about the meetings that we'd had and so forth. Oh, this is the timeline that? that you had requested? Right. Okay. So you could just go over that with sure. everyone. We all have a copy of it. Sure. You want me to read it? If, well, yes, just okay. explain sure. how things came about. So um, then, um, as we were talking just a minute ago, July 2013 is when we uh, sent our 2014 tax budget to the county. And again, the Twin Creeks payment was included in that tax budget. And then in March of 2014 is when the budget was adopted for the year 2014. The Twin Creeks payment was not appropriated. That October, the Twin Creeks payment was made. Uh, December 3rd, we had the council special meeting to discuss the budget. Uh, Mid-January, I don't have the exact date on, on that, I'm sorry, Colleen wasn't here, so I know it was mid-January based on the date we sent everything to the county. Um, the budget year was closed about mid-January. January 12th, we had um, the council special meeting again regarding budget. End of January 2014, closing budget was certified by the county. And that is when we found out our revenues that came in were $100,000 less than was expected when we did the tax budget. And then February 23rd is another council special meeting uh, for budget. Thank you for going over. Uh, council, any questions on that? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, Ms. Jones, so are we going to have to pay penalties because we missed a payment? No, I just said we did not miss a payment. We paid the bill in October. In October in October of 2014, but it wasn't appropriated right. in 2014. So. That's why the budget ended up in the red, because it wasn't put into the budget to spend. We still paid the bill. We still paid the bill. Right. So, right. Then we, so now we're just transferring the other monies in to bring it out. To catch red. up for what was not appropriated and then to appropriate for this year's payment. All right. That was my question, Mr. McIntyre. Mr. McIntyre. I, I do have a question on one of the notes for the revised okay. budget, if it's OK to ask that. Uh, sure. Uh, on its uh, item nine, we'll talk about the deputies money. Um, it says here, you know, people had asked where the monies for the deputies went. And it, it states here, this money was not in our hands to save. This money we would have had to spend, but now we don't since the expenses for that department are now reduced. The result of cutting two deputies is that we have less expenses. I thought that the money for the deputies comes from the general fund, which we, we get anyway, but then that money is now not going to the deputies, so it would stay in the general fund, but this item here says that's incorrect. Do you have any? No, it stays in the general fund, but the money in the general fund comes in a little bit at a time daily. It's not like we have the money that we saved. So it's in the general fund, but then it's redistributed throughout the rest of the, of the budget to make the numbers not be in the red. So that, that $200,000 is dispersed to other It's dispersed. Areas 
to or 180, 180, 180, 180, 180 yeah, yeah, around that. Is right, it's dispersed throughout areas. the budget to make the, the numbers work. Right, okay. right. Thank you. Okay, you're all set. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Lowry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Kim, would you please explain number seven? Okay, are we back on the other sheet? Yeah, the first one we was looking at, I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, we have to send, and I'm not a, I'm not a finance director, so I'm going to go by what I'm I- am talking about the $100,000. Number seven, right, right, right. Okay. Okay. I want to know exactly where we lost it. Well, when we did our tax budget in July of 2013, it's a guess for what we're going to get that next year for our budget. But revenues come up, revenues go down. Re expenses go up, expenses go down. We took our best guess. Now remember, Colleen started in March, okay? So she's doing this budget in July, and she used Richard's previous tax budget as a guideline. So we're using similar numbers. She hadn't been here all year to know what m the money comes in, what months, what revenues come in. So best guess in July as to what we were going to have was what we did for our tax budget. And when we got the end of the year, everything's closed, everything's paid, January, uh -huh. it comes back from the county, and it was 100,000 less than what we had said in July of 2013. Okay. But that's like from uh, 2013 to, I don't, want, I don't want to get the wrong dates, 2013, 2015. Yeah, it's like, what, five months difference? Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't have it right in front of me. I've got so much paper here. Um, Mr. Lowry, would you speak up so people could hear you back there? I know they're having I, trouble I, hearing you. I'm sorry. Not okay. a problem, sir. Um, I lost my train of thought. Okay, previously you stated that we lost $100,000 a year from the federal government or, st or the state government. We've lost it from several sources. Okay, that's what I want to know. Where did we lose it? Um, I believe I gave a spreadsheet a while ago, but I don't know if I have it here with me tonight where I broke down the different places we had gotten less money. Um, I will have to look through and see if I can find it. I broke down where we had gotten less, I think it was a graph actually, where we had gotten that, uh, less um, CDBG, uh, less, um, I can't even remember all of them now, but I had a graph. And I think, Randy, did you help me do a pie chart or something like that? Okay. Okay. I think what he's getting at it wasn't one hundred thousand dollars in a lump sum that came in. It was different things that we did not receive. Right. Is that right. Correct? Right. Right. Okay. okay. A accumulation of different. Right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now I'm not. Now you just kind of lost me there. He said one hundred thousand dollars from several things. This was, you know, earlier you said. The, you know, it was from taxes, $100,000. Income taxes were down, too. Okay. How far down was the income taxes? And my next question to follow that is, you know, did you know all during the year about money going down? Because I, I know when, when we get our reports, I see a 2% decrease. Uh, Mike says, you know, because oh, of, income tax uh, down. Income tax is down. This is down. When, when did the light bulb go off and say, hey, you know, we're going to be down a hundred thousand? We saw this from the county. We all knew that the funds have been going down the last ten years, but that the tax budget was off, we didn't know until January. But all the funds. And we've talked about that many times, how mm -hmm. everything is, we're getting less and less from the state, we're getting less and less from the federal government. So, so do we know, you know, how that hundred thousand dollars, you know, how much of that was income taxes that was not paid or was? I don't know what the source of that revenue was, and I'm a, I don't know if Mrs. Harris knows, but I, you know, I can find out and right. let you know. John, that would be something I would think on our next council meeting that our finance director, who's not here tonight, might be able to answer for us if we could yeah. wait until our next, till she's here. Now, could you prepare for that? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm right. I'll write it down. Okay, thank uh -huh. you. Anyone else? Any other questions, Mr. Evans? I have one more question. Uh, 
we had said like throughout the, the process of this that we were cut to the bone. There was nothing more to cut. And then all of a sudden all this stuff magically appears to get cut. And we're like, oh, wait, we can cut all this and have a 16,000 surplus and keep the pool open. How did that happen? Why wasn't this originally well, considered? if you read oh, every- Oh, I've read, but why wasn't this originally considered? Okay, well, let me see. Let me tell you this. Um, local government fund and A, local government fund and grass and weed assessment revenues, we adjusted that up. Um, B, the $30,000 that we were going to try to put aside for a new server, we cut to $5,000. So that means if our server goes, we may have enough for one payment to get us on a down payment. But, I mean, if you want the pool open, that's where we have to find the money. $12,000 okay, to so, fix the well, floor in here. I'm going to go back to A real fast. Uh -huh. uh, that we're going to increase the weed and grass cutting, like we've increased the revenues. Like, how do we know that we're going to get paid for that? Because most of those go be put on back taxes, correct? Exactly. When so how first, do we know that it's going to come in at all? When we first did the budget, we tried to not put in anything that we didn't think we were going to get. So but, now we think we're going to get this, even though we probably won't? Well, we, we had cut it quite a bit. I, I don't want to give exact numbers. It was like maybe we brought in 20 last year, we brought in 19 last year or the year before that, and this year we were going to put in 15 to be, to be um, safe. I mean, we could bring in 30, we could bring in 20 again, but we didn't want to count on getting that money because we won't know. But now we are because now we're saying we're that count, we're... We adjusted it up just a little bit, yes. All right. I just think that's foolish because that's shifting it around and saying, oh, we might, we might make pool, some money out of this, but we probably won't. Mr. Evans, like it also may be money that's coming in from past years that the people are finally paying. How many people are buying okay. houses, though? We have 93 or 89. Oh, is it, how many vacant homes do we have? 79, 72, 70 something? Yeah, it's not. But, no, but it does because we cut those grass, we cut that grass, and it gets put on to the lien of that house. Exactly. Yes, Mr. Bridge. Sometimes the homeowner can be occupied. How long does it take to get the payment? And what's the average payment? All right, what's the average payment that comes in? I mean, I think we should be really very realistic and not just guess that we're going to bring in some. We feel money. this is still a realistic number. We were just trying to be really safe with the original budget. So we're still being realistic. This isn't something that we're not going to get. You said we, we might not get it. More than likely, we will. We were gambling lower to not be building up a fluffy budget. But we added up, I believe we added $1,000. All right. No more questions. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions? Go forward here. Real quick. Mr. Craybrock. Um, tell you how fragile the budget is. And Howie, I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step on you a little bit. The pump, there was a pump that went out. This, Can this, you hear me? There, you know, Can, there was a pump again, that went out. Again, excuse me one minute, John. If we could all speak up, because I know back in the back they're probably having trouble hearing this. I see people going like this. Mr. Cobb's having trouble there, so if we could project a little bit more, it'll help. Okay, please. I'm gonna tell you how fragile the budget is. You know, this week a pump went out. Am I right, Mr. You told me before in the meeting? Yes. $31,000 for that pump, okay? But you're gonna, you're gonna piece it together with chewing gum and something and hopefully it will work. Is that about the size of it? Um, well, just so that everybody know, we were just talking about general fund. This is the wastewater fund. Right, right. It's different. It's a wastewater fund, right. Yeah, this right. is wastewater fund. They have their funds in their capital replacement to purchase this if we need to replace it, yes. $31,000 is a big chunk, but that is one of our two pumps down. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right, anyone else? Shall we go forward? Okay, thank you, Mrs. Jones. You're thank welcome. you, Council. Mr. Mayor, if I may, I just want to apologize. Yes, please. I want to apologize for joining the meeting late. I had a personal issue arise that delayed my departure. Welcome. We're glad you're here. I apologize. Thank you. All right, we now have the city manager's report at this time, and we can get back into this and other business if we need to. Uh, we're now at comments from... We're still, I we're still, still have to manager. finish up my report. Sorry. I, I'm very sorry. I beg your pardon. We got so... That's okay. Done here. Yeah, Please, go ahead. Beg your pardon. Okay, under service discussion, Mr. Kitko had some important updates for us. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Good evening, Ma uh, Mayor, Council, members of the public. Just one quick update. We are about 90% complete with our water meter upgrade project. 
Um, and I just wanted to state just in the last, so uh, basically Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this past week, we got our uh, manual data logging capability up with just a handheld. Today they're putting actual collectors out on our towered sites. Um, we've already helped four customers, doesn't sound like a lot of 2,000 and some change, but just in those couple days, we have uh, been able to data log their meter for the month, um, pull and print up graphs that show them where they had a major leak, fix that leak, and still have a toilet leak. Or we found a stuck humidifier on an individual's house. Um, there has been really no argument once we email, fax, or send these um, uh, papers to the customer. So we've already conserved and are saving with the data logging capabilities of these meters. So I can't wait till the whole system gets up and uh, and then shows that instead of uh, just a, a verbal communication between two cu uh, the customer and utility, we just print it up and boom, we show them the exact time of day. Uh, for instance, one of them was using six gallons every hour from basically midnight to six, every night for almost a month. So it was a stuck humidifier is what we found. So I just wanted to point that out. And uh, but that is that is all I have uh, from my report. Okay, council, any questions? Yes, Mr. Kitka, what's the, uh, there was a lot of talk about it on, on like social media and stuff, like the old water tower, what's the status of it as far as structurally safe and things of that nature? Um, there's a couple different options. We're looking at a study that we have budgeted for this year. Um, if the tower is uh, still need to be in use, we will keep it and put necessary repairs into it. I can let you know just on a non-bid number, it's about 120000 to repaint and fix the structural base, the um, retighten the guide wires. They have to remove the lid off the top and do some fastening. Uh, to tear it down is 28000 So there's a significant cost savings to eliminate future repairs if it can come down and eliminate the excessive cost we have now to bring it back uh, basically into life if we need it. If we don't need it, um, we will just continue to put the three, we have about 300, a little over 300,000 to paint and clean up Scarf Tower. There's a lot of OSHA requirements um, that need to be taken care of with that tower. As far as I have noticed that there's possibility of, uh, well, if the city doesn't use the tower, can it sit empty in there and then not have the weight of the water? I will have to get back to you on that one. I am not sure if that structure can stand alone without waiting it for any significant time and what would be the cost to someone if they were to take it over or something like that we're still looking at that would the city if, if it, we decide to tear it down would the city pay for that or would the company take the metal scrap as payment that's that that's why it's a uh, really inexpensive twenty eight thousand to tear that tower down is actually pretty cheap he's going to take that money plus his scrap money okay thank you right, anyone else any other questions mr kicko and would you continue, please? Yes, under informational, in your packet was an email that I received earlier this week, actually it was Friday, um, to let us know that there is a uh, statewide tornado drill. We do this every year. Um, you may have heard our, our regularly scheduled drill this morning. It did go off. We've had some problems with them forgetting, but it did go <coughs> off this morning at 10. This Wednesday you will hear it again, and that is part of the statewide tornado drill will be at 9.50 and that's on March the 4th. And that's part of the Severe Weather Safety Awareness Week in Ohio, which is uh, March the 1st through the 7th. So would you let your neighbors know about that so we don't have calls? I hope it doesn't, it's one not raining Wednesday. Mr. McIntyre has a question. We, uh, Ms. Jones, we used to have, or maybe they still do, I think it's run by the county, a system where people can go online, fill out a form, saying I want to be called or contacted right. if the tornado mm -hmm. is present. Do we, do we still have that? Right. How do people access it? We do. We do. Um, you can fill out the form, like you said, online, or you can come to the city building and get a form. And um, not too long ago, the sheriff actually used that um, service to let us know about the break-ins. Break-ins, break right, right. So that's still current. We're not utilizing it as much as I would like to be able to. At one point, I had hoped to be able to use it to call people and say, um, there's going to be three inches of snow, don't park on the snow routes. Um, this week, we're going to be picking up leaves in this area of town. At, originally, when they started, they were charging us to do that, so we didn't pursue it a lot. But I still, that is something we'd like to be able to use. It would be great to be able to say, there's a budget work session this evening. Everybody come to get the word out. It would be a great tool. So that is something we hope to keep 
working on. I, I think this is ironic that they actually picked Wednesday because I know tomorrow night they're forecasting late at night, temperatures going up and thunderstorms and maybe lightning in the morning. They moved it? Oh, great. Well, I didn't get a new email to tell me that, so. All right. Well, if you don't hear it, <laughs> they moved it. Sorry, I don't have an update on that. Mr. Jones, that, that, uh, the sign and draft activated from Springfield, right? They're not activated here in town. Right. Springfield Dispatch. Um, okay. um, Springfield Police Department does our dispatching and they set off the sirens for us, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Usually with direction from the National Weather Service. Okay. Anyone else have any other questions at this time? Okay, Would okay. You continue, please. Number two, um, there's a company that has been set setting peddlers around the city. Um, they go by the name of Just Energy and also First Energy. They've come out in, gotten their per peddler permits. Well, we've gotten a lot of customer complaints about them, threatening them, um, saying the city gave me this letter and you have to let me see your gas bill and they're making you switch. That is totally not true. And when I found out about that, I called the supervisor for the company and they are banned in the city for at least a year until they can change their ways. I'm not going to let people like that go door to door and threaten the citizens. So. If you see somebody at your door, please call the sheriff's office because they will not have a permit and they're not allowed to be going door to door. And what that was again the name is of those companies just again? energy slash first energy. I've seen them use both names or the paperwork says just energy, but people are calling me and saying it's first energy. I think that they're it's one and the same. Uh, so I just want to give everybody a heads up on that. I want to also uh, say a thank you to my employees. Uh, you may remember we had a water main break on Main Street, February the 19th, one of the coldest days this winter. Uh, I had six employees out there for over 15 hours overnight in the cold, in the snow, and getting wet. And I truly appreciate their dedication. They didn't stop. They didn't. They didn't go go home and take a nap or go home and get a hot di a dinner. So um, I, I'm just going to mention their names so that they can get a little attention. I, I truly appreciate it. Harvey Simmons, Bob Hoke, David Coleman, Brent Nipper, Rick Hooten, and Howie Kitko. And I do appreciate it very, very much. Lastly, in your packet is a letter that Howie sent to the Clark County Utilities Department, and that was actually part of the same incident. Um, Howie, do you want to describe it so I don't give the wrong information? Uh, sure. Uh, what ended up happening is we had a, an old uh, the plumbing, the mains had been put in in the 30s. Well, a valve blew the top off of a valve. So basically it was blown wide open. We could not keep up with our two pumps that we had with the water flow. So I called the county uh, utility supervisor, and within 30 minutes he had us hooked up with some pumps out of their Bethel Township um, office and uh, was able to get us two of them without question. Uh, we return, we clean them up, return them the next day, and um, we've worked well with the county. And I just want to thank Dave Hastings, who's their supervisor, and Chuck Bauer, who's their utility director. And that's who I sent the letter to, and I uh, copied in the county commissioners with that also. Questions? Anyone? How many, how many uh, people did that affect, that main going out? You're talking about. Uh, the the boil advisory we well we had to shut it down. It was basically everybody on Main Street from the two speedways to Jefferson. Um, so really the the businesses that were open later, uh, Lee's Chicken Speedways, and then uh, Penny Lane was affected for Saturday. I was able to get a sample over to the lab Saturday night. Uh, we lifted the boil advisory first thing Sunday. I did not know that Penny Penny Lane wasn't open Sunday. I went in there Monday. You know, just told them I was sorry, you know, that type of thing. And uh, they said, you know, no biggie, we weren't open on Sunday. But Speedway was appreciative and Lee's was able, uh, Lee's actually bucketed their water in from other stores uh, to stay open. But, um, you know, there was no hard feelings or anything. I think they worked well with us. Thank you. Any questions for anyone else? Okay. Uh, you know, you guys, sorry, were, you guys were really great. They came in right before the, you know, we, we do a breakfast at a church. You know, and I saw the little tag on the, on the thing. But, you know, when we got rid of the wash dishes, you know, he came in and said, hey, you can use your water. So, you know, they, they were really good. All set?
That's the end of my report. Thank okay, you. thank you. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Now we're at comments to the members of the public. Do we have someone that would like to speak this evening? If you do, we need you to go up to the podium, state your name and address if you would. Speak up so we can hear you. My name is Ronald Cobb, 202 Villa Drive. Four meetings prior to your executive session, you had money. You had an executive session, you had $195. Where'd the money come from? Where did the $195 come no, from? No. Before did it go, that, you mean? Before that, you had money. You had an executive session. You had left $195 at the end of 2015. Okay, Mr. Cobb, we cannot speak about budget at all in an executive session. That has to be done in an open session. So I there's nothing means, I think in an executive work, session. I think he means work session, not executive right. session. So our, yeah. our work, work session you're speaking Cobb. about? Our work, excuse me, that's our work okay, session. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, our, our special session, it's called. It's now called a special session. But that, that was the one that we had done. Uh, that's something that we'll probably talk of a little bit later in other, if that would be all right for you. I know council members have some questions and so forth. Um, evidently, there was some confusion between staff and ourselves, and that's what we're trying to figure out, if you would. Okay. Okay. Now, the Twin Creeks, $80,000 a year for 20 years. What's this for? I'll let uh, our city manager answer that, if you would, please. That's an assessment that is towards the infrastructure, the streets, sidewalks, curbs, bridge. That was all done by the original developer. Then the um, company went out of business and went bankrupt, and the developer actually died. The city ended up being on the hook for that money. But you can't get deeds to the lots that you still have open there, correct? We're still working on that. That's a process that's going on with the county to get that. Yes, go ahead. Sir, that that currently is in process with the Clark I, County. I can't hear you, ma'am. That currently is in process with the Clark County Prosecutor's Office, where they are following a statutory procedure to provide notice for those properties to move forward in a to go up for a sheriff's sale. And if it's not sold there, then we expect that it will be put into a community reinvestment program and the lots will be offered for sale if there's interest for sale. So that is, that is a process that is that, that the city of New Carlisle is not party to at this time and that has to be handled through the Clark County Prosecutor's Office. But you can't sell the deed, can't sell any of the lots right now, correct? The lots cannot be sold right now. Not until the prosecutor's office is through going through the statutory notice procedure. The circumstances surrounding those properties are very unusual in the course that they took. And now this is the process that has been decided by the prosecutor's office to give proper notice that's required uh, to uh, anyone uh, under the statutes of Ohio. And once that process is complete, uh, then the properties will move forward. Okay. One more quick question. Yes, sir. You say you've got money now to operate the pool. Correct? Correct. They have, it's been moved in 36900 I believe, from the budget into the pool because we had passed by a majority vote to keep the pool open for 2015. So money has been moved from the general fund into a, the pool fund at this point okay. in the budget. Again, this budget moves all the time. It's constantly moving. It's not written in stone, but that's what's happened at this point. Well, I was just concerned because money wasn't there and now it's there. That, you see where I'm coming from? Yes, sir. Well, there was no money transferred in at all for the 2015 budget that we initially saw on our last meeting, the special meeting you were talking about. But like I say, it was funny for four meetings there, you, you was going to have X number of dollars at the end of the year. You had a work session, 
and you're going to be down to 195. You see where it gets concerned? Yes, sir. We, there when was a hit dis disconnect somehow between council and staff, and we are in the process of trying to rectify that. Yes, but the city manager has a comment. At the time we initially started working on the budget back in December, we still were having expenses coming in for the month of December. So the numbers we were projecting in at that time period were not in stone. We were trying to go with our best guess with what we had right then, what we would actually end the year with. At that time, we put the money in the finance department for a server, and when we were reminded that council wanted the pool open, we moved that money. It wasn't new money that we found. The money was always the same amount of money. We just moved it over to the pool and out of the um, finance department. Does that explain it any easier? Yeah. Well, I mean, see where I'm coming from. I mean, the money wasn't there, now it's there. But those numbers that we were telling you in December, I'm, I'm trying to explain, they were not in concrete because we hadn't closed the year. There was no way we could know what we were going to actually have. But we still have to work on a budget, even though we don't have the final numbers. So we have to start somewhere, and that's where we started. I think if I may add, just for purposes of explanation, because this isn't my area, but what she's explaining is the amount of money that's available is what's available. And so just like any family sits down for a budget, there's needs, there's <coughs> wants, there's maybe if we're luckies. Right. And so all that pot of money after the accounts closed were all the same, whether it went to a server for the finance department, whether it went to keeping the pool open for another year, whether it went for a police cruiser, it doesn't matter. All of the money is the same. And so after the, after the general or after the work session that you're referencing, then the money was rearranged and put into different line items. It's still all the same money. It's not that the money was there on one day and then not on another. It's all the same funds. It's just where is it going to be allocated? And that's what we were talking about earlier about whether or not something was appropriated. Allocated and appropriated mean the same thing. Okay? But all I was saying, are, you know, one day you hear it one way and then the next. I can understand the confusion. I'm trying to figure out how to explain it. No, I can understand the confusion, and we were all talking how we think that we had a miscommunication, too, because apparently administration was on one page and council was on another page, which we neither one knew that the other was not thinking along the same line. So we're, we're going to try to work on finding out how that happened. You may have been a part of that miscommunication that... I mean, from what what I read and was on the, on the news and everything, you should have had a bowl of free fish. Mr. Cobb, you. before you leave up there, Mr. Lowry would like to say something. Yeah, I have a couple things, actually. First of all, I agree with you. There's people sitting here that don't know where that money went and where it came from. I'm going to be straight up you. with you, okay? I can't hear you. I, I don't know how much louder I can speak. Can you hear me now? Go ahead. Okay. There's people here that are confused about the money as well, okay? I don't know how that we laid off two deputies because we was broken, we'd only have $195. And two weeks later, it all changed. But we're gonna find out, okay? Set, and Kim, I'm sorry, but the finance director should be here. Upset that she was given time off for this meeting. She was of given time meetings, off. Two months ago, we didn't know that this process would okay, still be coming. But of all meetings that she should be in, this is one she should be in, okay? I mean, we knew this was coming. We knew this room was going to be full. She should be here. We didn't know that okay. two months ago. Okay. Well, but I mean, you know, things change, okay? Uh, that's my opinion. I think she should be here. Third, for the law director, I just heard you say that there was going to be another option for the Twin Creeks. Twin Creeks properties, is that correct? No, I was explaining the process. Okay, so there is not going to be another option. I was explaining alternatives. I was explaining what is allowed in the process. The notice occurs. After the notice occurs, then the properties go up for sheriff's auction. But that's already happened. They've already been to auction three times. So my question to you is, are you saying they have to go to auction again? That is what I have been told by the county prosecutor's office because the notice that was done in the past was not accepted. Something is absolutely wrong. The, the deeds was in the hands of the city, okay? They were here. 
Sir, these. Wait a minute, I'm not finished. I'm sorry, go okay. ahead. Okay, they were here. City administration was told me there was a slight mistake made. We have to send them back and get them resigned. How long ago has that been? Over a year. Over a year. Mm -hmm. Something is wrong. Now, somebody somewhere hey, didn't do step. their job or isn't doing their job. I don't know who, but something's wrong. When I, after I was appointed law director, one of my first tasks was to follow up on the status of this situation, which I did. And it was told to me by the county prosecutor's office that a deed needed to be signed in order for them to embark upon this notice process that is required. I went and signed the remaining deed that hadn't been signed, and then they embarked upon this process that I have explained. Because of the highly unusual circumstances that surround these properties, which is to the fault of no one, the notice that was done before I was appointed, which is perhaps what you are referencing, right. was not deemed to be appropriate, was deemed to be defective. From my review of it, I don't know how anyone can argue with that or, or lay any opinion to it in that no one that has reviewed this process has ever seen such a fact pattern arise before. And so the potential buyer was not comfortable with the situation was not comfortable that proper notice has had occurred and asked that it be done through the Secretary of State's office, which is what is occurring. That's the first time we've heard that. that I, have, I have not heard that about that. The buyer that said he wasn't that comfortable with that first time. and that it's going to the Secretary of State. We've never heard that. It, well, I don't know what to tell you, but that's... I mean, I'm hearing different stories every time we have a meeting about these problems. Well, I haven't given you any different stories. That's that's the information that I have from the county prosecutor's office. It's Thank remained you. the same, and I think that they're doing everything in their power to move it forward. Thank you. I Mr. just Mr. Lowry had a question. A couple of weeks ago, and no one said anything about the property owner being upset and going to the Secretary of State. I didn't say that the property owner went to the Secretary of State. I did not, I did not say that. Because the owner of the LLC died, there is no one to serve the notice right. upon to extinguish those rights because it is defunct and the owner is deceased. And so that is what throws a wrinkle into this that is, that is causing concern. And they want to ensure that all rights are extinguished before a new property owner comes in so that there aren't any problems associated with any future potential transactions. Thank you. I think you've explained it very well. Yes, Mr. Mike Lowry would like to speak. Ms. Jones, didn't, um, if not two, at least one, one of those properties was sold? Two. Two? two. Mm -hmm. How did that get through yeah. and not the others? I don't, I don't know. I don't know that they maybe didn't do a title search. Is the people still on those properties, correct? Yes. They so were then the how did, first two. Then how, do we, how do we not? How are not LSL the other t are the other thirty something of them? Or they were also, them also or a different buyer than what is looking at the thirty. The same per that it's, it's still an individual situation. buying it. No matter if it's Mr. Gilliam or the Smooths, there's still one Mr. individual. It was just said, and we shouldn't use the name of who's coming, if you would please. Okay? Sorry, it's a buyer, and the buyer is the one that asked. I believe is what you just said. Yeah. You not? He, he's the one. That so the buyer is asking to have them make sure that the deeds are clear. But if, what he's doing. but if we're going through this and we're wanting to sell these properties and, and, and he and the buyer wants this certain way, well, why don't we just sell them to other people as we go along? We, we already did it to, we already sold two properties, why don't we just sell them more? If it weren't a legitimate concern, with all due respect, the county prosecutor's office wouldn't be taking the steps that they're taking. No one but, wants so, anyone. So do we need to go tell the other two, the, the person who bought the other two lots, we need to take them back from you now because we're, we're sorry, we screwed up. I mean, we did not screw up. Okay. And I don't, I don't have, I have not, um, I don't have any knowledge about these other two properties and I have not looked at them so I can't address any questions about that. But everyone uh, that is working to move this through the process, in my opinion, is working forward in the, in the best interest of doing it correctly and in good faith. Thank you. Did you have something? Yeah, I mean, I... That was my question. I think, you know, and I know what you were getting at, Ethan, is, but I, I know the buyer wanted them. There is a buyer that wants all 30 or whatever, 28 that's left, and that'll be great because then that'll bring 
you know, especially if they develop tax dollars in the city and they'll start paying that, I think it's a $60 a month assessment to pay for uh, the uh, infrastructure, the electric and things out there. But, you know, if the buyer isn't comfortable with the legal, what you would say, the legal uh, terms with that property in its present state, I mean, you can't follow him. He doesn't want to buy something and then turn around and get yanked out. He wants free and clear deeds. Right. Exactly what now, he wants. I don't, I don't know process. if right. the other two properties is you know, possibly in jeopardy of something not legal there, but well, apparently I don't I know. Think they are, it seems like, then. Hey, Mr. McIntyre, um, I have a question. Are all the, the properties in question, is the deeds to them, are they all in the county's hands? Because I believe a year or so ago there was a case with um, uh, an owner in Michigan, or at least there was a legal issue with courts in Michigan. Has that been resolved, or? I, I know nothing of, if I know something about the sure. legal issue with regard to Michigan, okay. I'm, we're not. I think we were told there was, it was an estate of someone who was elderly and they right. were. They had that's some, not the oh, same. Oh, that's a separate issue. That's a separate issue. That is a separate issue. Okay, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's the large parcel, yeah. Sure. yeah. That's the yes, Kennedy yeah. Trust. Mr. Cobb, just to clear up something that you had asked about how did we get into that situation oh, with I'm Twin sorry. Creeks. You've heard it before. I'll say it again. There were a few of us that are on this council that was on council at the time. We were told at that time by our law director and our city manager, a different city manager, that this would never come back to harm the city of New Carlisle. Well, unfortunately, we ran into a big black hole, and that's what we're in now, because it has come back, because the gentleman passed away, and it's been a big mess. And unfortunately, we're having to pay on that bond, and that's what that is. And I believe it's what, close to 600 now, somewhere in that area? Do you know that offhand? On the, the bond 30, yet? On the 30 parcels? No, I'm talking about on Twin Creeks, period. Oh, I think it's around, it's or, between. It's around 600,000, 600, I believe. 600, That's for all the infrastructure that has been put in out there. The water, sewer, streets, sidewalks, all that type of thing. Not sidewalks, though. Well, no sidewalks, you had to pay for that, right? right. <laughs> So does that answer your question on that? I just wanted to get some answers. That's right, and well, I'm just putting it out there for everyone. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, sorry we had you stand up. Yes, ma'am, would you like to speak? If you go up to the podium. Mr. Mayor, just to add to something that you said there to, to address that last point, in, in addition to the fact that there were issues with the then developer um, that led to the issues, I think that it's very fair to say that uh, the issue there was mainly that the economy fell out and people weren't issue. buying houses and all of this money had been invested in that rather substantial project for this area that was not going to recover as a result of the overall economy, not just for New Carlisle, not just for Ohio, but for our country. And that that circumstance is one that I have seen many of my political subdivisions experience and is not unique to your community. And so those guarantees that people um, were making that this isn't going to come back to haunt you in the future, let's move forward, this is for growth and development, were words that I'm sure were spoken at many a council meeting at different places throughout the country because it was growth, growth, growth until the economy fell out. Thank you for clearing that up. Yes, ma'am, if you go ahead, your name and your My address. My name is Nancy Lebanovich, and I live at 505 Kings Drive. A uh, couple things. See inside. We're having trouble hearing you up here, ma'am. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm having trouble hearing you guys. A um, couple things strikes me. Uh, if we sold two of these properties, it might be a good idea for you as law director to find out what that involved. And maybe we could follow up some more on the, uh, the other properties following that example. Um, the other thing is the gentleman that put out that plat out there was well known to be somewhat shady, shall we say, and he uh, had a lot of places that people would not go into business with him. One of them was the um, gravel pit that he wanted to put uh, pubs in the Ma'am, excuse me, I will stop you now. It was a different developer I, that we're talking about. But it's not the one you're mentioning it. with the gravel pit. He yeah. had a hand no. in it. Totally different okay. developers. Also, um, I understand budgets. I do it every day, every month. I take out a Peter and give to Paul. I understand that very fully. The problem I have is I only know how much Paul has. You don't. So when you, you make these guesses, 
you're going to have to do some more besides just guess. You're going to have to cut some of the, uh, and I hate to say this because I'm sure people will hate me, but some of the benefits that your city workers get. Uh, when I look at the sheet where you pay people, uh, none of us are getting these benefits anymore. Uh, we don't get health and, and uh, death and that kind of insurance at this point. The, when you look at the sheriff, what they're getting, we're paying for everything down there at that substation, whether or not we have four or two people down there. So I don't think we save much by cutting two people out. I really don't. And now come to find out it didn't save anything at all. So I think we need to find a better way. We are a laughing stock over this whole state. You go any place in the state and they go, oh yeah, New Carlisle. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Council, anyone? <clears throat> Anything? Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? If you'd like to speak, now's the time. Yes, sir. Name, name and address, please. I have several questions and probably comments. Name and address, please. My name is William Lindsay. I live at 314 North Henry Street. I know a couple of you up there. You may not know me, but I know you. Uh, I know you. You know me, don't you, John? <laughs> oh, you think you know me. You might know me better after tonight. Uh, the problem I have, because I hear a lot of things in the city, I talk to a lot of people. The $195 headline I've seen in the paper really irritated me. We cut off two deputies, saved $180,000, $186,000. This man right here is the second deputy I've seen in six weeks. Why is that? I know why. There's nobody in this town during the daytime. For not very long, not all day. I never see the deputy that's in town. I don't know where he's at, if he's even here. We may not even have one for all I know. But I know the people I can call to find out and get that schedule. Do you guys know the schedule of the deputies? Yes. Tell me. No, I won't say it on camera, sir. It's, it's for the good of the safety of the city. See me after the meeting, I man. As a citizen in this town, and a taxpayer, and a property holder, and a business holder, I know I need to know that. I know I'm entitled to know that. Question number two, or comment number two, I guess it is. How can you, how did you guys justify, and it's all of you guys up there, she has nothing to do with this one, I don't believe. How did all of you justify in your mind to keep a pool open that you had 60 people last year as members? I don't know what the membership is. I don't really care. The pool's never open to go enjoy it anyhow. If you're going to have a pool, have it open seven days a week, at least 12, 13 hours a day. Let people enjoy it. Raise your fees if you need to. Or close it down and bring back our deputies to this town. These gentlemen in this black uniform is a hell of a lot more important than 60 people swimming at that pool and people coming in from outside paying 5 or $10 a day to swim. I do not understand the logic in keeping a pool open that's losing money. And any of you is more than welcome to correct me if I'm wrong. That pool has been losing money ever since I've been in this town. Would you like to? I'll, I'd like to I'll take a breather and let you speak. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, no, not, I can't remember the numbers for who all voted and who voted no for the poll. And I'll tell you, I did vote to keep the pool, my personally. And there's a couple different reasons why. You know, if we if we decide to close the pool, it wouldn't bring two deputies back. Uh, two Might years, bring one. No, it wouldn't. No. Not even close. Uh, the, the one deputy is ninety two thousand dollars. That's his, that's his pay, his benefits, etc. The pool, hmm. uh, I think the past two years lost around forty-two to forty-five thousand dollars. So, uh, and then I think three years ago it had actually came close to breaking even, or even made ten thousand. And yeah, nine times out of ten, it's not going to make money. But the thing is, is, and I guarantee you, there's probably, well, I'm not going to speak for the room, but we we've all seen it on social media, newspapers. People love to, to grill the city for the Madison Street School. And, and I agree, it's, it's horrible to have that building set back there where there's people that have houses back there and it's, it's an eyesore. We close that pool, it's gonna turn into the same thing. No one's gonna buy it because you can't make money out of it. 
And, and Ron, I, I remember you saying to tear it down. That's another thing that it's going to cost money. I'm not saying it's the best thing to have, but a lot of services in town cost and lose money. I mean, salt and roads, um, uh, you know, taking care of the parks, it doesn't make the city any money. But if you close a new Kalau pool, it's closer to downtown Main Street. It's going to get graffiti. It's going to get, you know, kids could possibly hop the fence and, and you know, break their leg, file suit against the city. Uh, you know, but the city will still have to carry insurance on it and things of that nature, so it's still going to cost money, just like you know Madison Street, uh, Madison Street School does. You know, as far as the city keeping insurance on it and things of that nature. But that's that's my big thing. And even if, let's say the pool, it, it could be a hundred degree summer, which I doubt it will be. It hasn't been that trend lately, but it could actually come close to breaking even again. So therefore, it wouldn't have been a savings to begin with. I mean, odds are, if you look at the books, it is a loss, but. That's what I think about. Every time I think about closing the pool, I think of Madison Street, but being that much closer to downtown New Carolina. That's that's my personal thought behind it. Well, okay. Let's get Mr. McIntyre first. I, I'll answer McIntyre. the question about the pool and the deputy. I'm gonna throw myself to the woods and go out into the wolves and say that I did vote to not cut the deputies. I voted to keep the deputies, and I also voted to keep open the pool. And here's my rationale behind it. I didn't want to cut the deputies for all the reasons that you said. You know, I. Don't want to be a place that we see crime go up. I know that people on social media, they can get on their cell phones and look up where police officers are, and they know when they can and can't get away from stuff. Two days before we had that vote, on my road, a dead-end road, nobody would ever go down, every car uh, had been broken into, and they left the door open on my, my truck, and then the, uh, the um, glove compartment uh, latched down, which drained the battery. They could have had the courtesy to at least shut the door. But, um, but yeah. anyway... To get back to it, the, the, the money, the deputies were voted to cut, to be cut, and I didn't agree with that for whatever it is, and then the pool came up, and I thought, well, the deputies are already cut, and as what I thought, and evidently that was incorrect, I thought we would have then at least you know, hundred ninety, hundred eighty-five thousand dollars in the My bank. Point. Yes, and, and now we and, have one ninety-five. And that we would have that. And I said, well, we've got the pool. So many people have come up to me and said. The pool's important to us. I had World War II veterans telling me I had parents of young kids. I had young kids in my neighborhood telling me how important the pool was. The manager of the pool came up and said, here's a list of seven different ways that we can save money. These are ways that I recommend we can save money for the pool and make it run more efficient. And that included buying uniforms, a whole bunch of different things. And I said, oh, and I was thinking, okay, I've got this list. We already have 200, about $200,000. We can keep the pool open, and then we can work on getting this deputy back by making the other cuts, or, or going for things like sharing a deputy with the township, an option that I think was discussed among everyone. And that, those were the options that we had going into these further budget discussions. And I, in my head, coming in, when we found out we only had $195, I said, OK, we've got about $200,000. We can work to keep the pool. We can work to do this deputy sharing. We can make other cuts in other places and get back to three and a half deputies with, with the sharing or maybe work way up to four with more cuts. Then I found out that I was mistaken because the budget that we had, and I know we're getting something we're going to discuss later, the budget that we had, um, I was not aware that things like the Twin Creeks or the other debts that we owe, I was not aware those were not included. I felt because those are the big elephants in the room, those would always be included in the conversation. They were not. Therefore, my vote to keep the deputies and keep the pool was based on a foundation that ended up being inaccurate. And so that's where I can tell you as far as where I came with it. Um, I felt that we had the money. Stuff was, was, it was a miscommunication somehow. We didn't. And so that was a rationale for my vote. And I can't speak for everyone, but that's where I came from with that decision. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Lauer. I voted yes on the deputies to cut. Not because I didn't want them, but because from what we looked at, we had no money to pay for them. I wasn't going to vote yes to keep the deputies, and then when payday comes, I guess what? Well, we can't pay you. Can okay. I ask you a question at that point? Certainly. The deputies that was cut, we went from the four to the two. What, is there any place else in the city that can be cut in the budget to bring back at least one, if not both deputies? That question is definitely going to be asked before this night is over. Well, I, I understand. I know probably should have had us ask all these questions after you guys got through what you was doing. Okay. But since it's in the middle of it, I'm sure I'm way ahead of the game here on what you guys are doing tonight. Uh, 
Another concern I have. And Can I finish, please? Yes, go ahead. Okay, yes, I'd like to finish. So that's the reason I voted to cut the deputies, because I knew from everything we was given, we did not have the money to pay for The pool, I voted to keep the pool open. That would not buy a half a deputy if we closed the pool. But I also believe in, for the city of New Carlisle, I don't agree with the young lady that stood up and said everybody's laughing at New Carlisle. I don't believe that. And I don't believe half the stuff that some of these people put on Facebook and everything else because they don't know what they're talking about. They like to make statements, but they don't really know what they're talking about, okay? I believe New Carlisle is a great little city. It's the second biggest city in, in Clark County, and I do not believe that people are laughing at it. Do we have problems? Absolutely. That is the reason I voted to keep it poor, to have some kind of quality of life for the children in this town to go to. If you close it, they have no place to go. Where are they going to be during the summertime? As Michael said, it's the same with the salt in the road, plowing the roads, picking up the limbs. We get nothing for that. The city gets nothing for that. It's a service. And that's what the swim pool is, a service. If we sell it, we can't sell it. Nobody's going to buy it. They couldn't afford to put the water in it. Okay? Raising the rates or something, I don't know. Maybe we do need to know that. Okay? And maybe before it's all over with, I may change my mind and say close. But as of right now, I still want the kids in this town to have some place to go to. And it has absolutely nothing, and I repeat, absolutely nothing to do with deputies here or not. I wish that we could get together and find the money to bring in 20 deputies. Okay. That would be overkill for a city of 5,500. Well, but I'm, I'm just using at least that. That's the figure I would like I to see that. Okay. Here. But but we can't do it. Okay. I wish we could. Thank that's you, sir. Why I did what I did. Mr. Reynolds, you had a comment. I had voted to cut the pool and keep the police because I felt like if we could. Well, I was under the assumption as everyone else up was, was up here. We're going to save 190. Well, if we cut one, it would save us, you know, uh, 89 to 92 thousand dollars. I was under that impression. So we were wrong. But I had voted to do it because I thought if we could, we, we could share a deputy with Bethel Township, splitting the cost 50-50. Uh, I think the pool has been a black hole. I think that we've not made anything out of it. Uh, I think that it needs to be closed. I know that I was outvoted. John and I were the only ones to vote no. But uh, the point I'm getting at is that we all thought we were going to have more money than it ended up being. And for that, I apologize because, and, I mean, I rarely agree with the city administration, and this time I agree with them that we need to close the pool. I mean, so, and I, I, I wish that we would, but unfortunately, this is a republic. I was outvoted, and it's going to stay until either something happens or we decide as a council to do something else. So. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Do you have one other question? It, it's supposed to be a limit of five minutes for you, just oh, to let you know. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I have one more question. Yes, sir. A couple of you have said that you didn't know or you didn't have the information. My question to the entire council, council is why don't you know? Why isn't the city manager making you seven people aware of everything in this city? This, you should know everything that goes on in this town. Because if I call any of you seven and I say, what about this? I expect an answer. I don't expect to, to hear. Well, let me get back to you because I don't know. If you don't know, you're not doing your job, and she ain't doing her job, and I'll end with this. I don't believe she's doing her job because of the fiasco with the budget. I think she should be fired. I think it should happen tonight. That's just my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of people in this town agrees with me at least the ones I've talked to. Thank you very much. That's all I've got sir. to say, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. You. All right. Anyone else? This is a time for anybody else like to speak. Please go up to the podium if you would. Name and address, please. Sean Cobb. I live in Bethel Township. Uh, I can look at this as a voice for the citizens. Uh, <coughs> You claim the pool, uh, you're going to throw $36,000 at it. Uh, the pool's losing water. Uh, how much water rate is it losing every year? The, it's leaking water. I mean, it's, Yeah, it's leaking. It's about 7,000 gallons a day. So how much does at, that cost? About $7.28 per thousand. Um, I did the, I can't remember what the total was. 5,000 5, total for the year. Right? Yeah, about $5,000 total for the year. Okay, so that's a cost. I mean, that's a, absolutely that's a, something to look at as well. Uh, I mean, you say that you guys have been misled. You were shocked. I mean, it's to me, that's a communication problem. 
uh, from the city manager standpoint to communicate with you. Uh, who hired, I mean, who's responsible for hiring her? Is that the city council? Council is. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I'm in agreement with him. I think something should be done to her tonight. Uh, and I, I'm all for like the finance director too. I think she should be replaced. This is uh, an extremely important thing to be at tonight. Uh, I mean, it's not, you can't say two months ago, we didn't know this was gonna happen. Uh, this, this has been coming up, you know. You're just kicking the can down the road and now this has finally built up to where it's a huge problem and now people are disappearing, you know, like don't wanna take part in it, it's what it seems like. I mean, you know, I would've went and seen family too if I was uh, anyone else, you know. But uh, now another question I have, how are you gonna pay for Bell Manor? Bell Manor still hasn't come up. We don't know for sure if we're going to receive it or not. We've not had uh, anything in writing with them. Uh, first off, Mel Bell Manor is going to be donated if that happens. That and furnishings. So we'll approach it when we come to that time. When you say, how are you going to pay for it? There'll be probably just some things of moving walls around or whatever. And the answer to that, we don't know for sure at this point. I'm sure that we're also paying eighteen hundred dollars a month for rent where we're located at this time okay but uh so does that the money building could have asbestos it? in it i'm sorry the building probably has asbestos in it for as old as it is no it, it meets all the requirements i mean it's open and working at this time okay so we could remodel i mean you're going to have to do some remodeling work so that's going to cost money as well so we, what's going to happen is uh, okay, we're, we're bringing up other things tonight that really we don't even know if we're going to get it yet at this point. So if we could move on, I'd appreciate it. Okay, I just I'm told you, we don't I mean, know. This is, Ray, this is a comments me. member of the public. He has a right to ask a, a question. I'm and, sorry, but. And he doesn't live in the city either. But oh. he's still. But you're out of order. <laughs> you're still. out of order. Stop it now, please. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. You know, I think uh, people are part of the problem sitting up there because you're not part of the solution. You claim, you know, cutting him off. I mean. It, that shows right there. I mean, you claim that, oh, we're all for fixing the problems, but I really don't think you are. Sir, I want to tell you something. All seven people up here have a love for this city. We all have a love for this city. We wouldn't be up here if we did not. We want what's best for the city. We're trying our best to do that. If you think you can correct the problem, then move back in the city and run for council. Yeah, maybe that'd be And be voted idea. in. We'd love to see yeah. it. Yeah, I think but we're trying to do too. what's right. There's a disconnect. That's obvious. We're working on that. I don't know what else to tell you. Okay. There's Any, a disconnect. Anybody else? Council? Any other? There's comments? a disconnect. You acknowledge there's a disconnect. We, we've acknowledged that. I think we've all acknowledged that tonight. Okay. So uh, it should have been taken care of last week. I mean, when all this come out, it should have been handled right then. Uh, we couldn't have, though, because it was a special meeting. We didn't have the right to do anything. That but the mayor can walk in the, and fire someone right away, right? No, 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 no. Excuse me. No, no, do you wait, even, wait, 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 wait. Let me just say something. One time, one time. The mayor has no more power than any other council member up here. Okay, but you guys could have held a special session. Just runs a meeting. That's all they call it. Okay. Could have done what? Hold on. Wait. I'm sure you could hold a special session. No. And, come to an agreement on that no, case. We that really problem. need to look up city manager, former governor, and take, please get him a copy of the New Carlisle City Charter and allow him to read it. I already it. have the city charter. And you need to read it? Yeah. Okay, and obviously there's more of you that need to than just a couple okay, of you. Okay, we're getting out of, that's my we're getting out of hand, please, if you'd hold it down. Do you have the whole floor now, please? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Allen. Um, yeah, Sean, you know, joke. <laughs> I'm not, saying, I'm not saying I disagree with you or agree with what you're saying about handling the situation after the bad news broke about the $195. But it's like with any job, I mean, we've got, give it, you know, we're going to have an exec, we're having an executive session tonight to, to ask our questions and find out. So, I mean, we can't just say, boom, you're fired. Or, you know, it, I'm not saying that's being said. I'm just saying it just. So, you know, just like if it, your job or anybody else's job, if, if someone suspects you of doing something, you can't just fire them without looking into it first. Give us, give us our few weeks or whatever it may be to, to do it. That, I mean, yeah, that's, it. That's, all, that's all I'm asking for, and that's, I think, what everyone's asking for. Hmm. Okay. I mean, do you, I mean, do you think yeah. it would be fair? To well, I work in the corporate office. I know how things work. Uh, this would never, uh, would never go on, I guarantee it. Well, we're not They'd walk you right out the door. We're not a corporation. 
But well, well, obviously, government. obviously, you know. It's a government entity. Government entities works by law. All I'm saying is, is let us let us ask our questions at this meeting tonight and go forth from there. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows what will be in the paper you know, Wednesday? You may find your answer that you're looking for. I'm not saying it will be, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Appreciate your time. Anyone else? Anybody else like to say anything tonight? Okay, we will go on with the meeting. Uh, comments? Any committee reports tonight? Uh, none tonight. Nothing at all. Resolutions, we have none. Ordinances, would you read the ordinance, please, that we have tonight? Ordinance 15-09, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for professional services to study the Linden Avenue and Scott Street intersection for street signage upgrades. Council. Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes. Motion to adopt ordinance 15-09. Second. This ordinance is in response to the citizen that we had come in about a month or two ago regarding um, uh, accidents that have happened at the intersection of Linden and South Scott. Um, we are looking into getting a professional engineer to come out and give us recommendations since it has been brought to our attention that there is a problem at that intersection and we're trying to find out the best way to, to fix the problem. They have questions. Let's go to Mr. Lowry first. Mr. Jones, what kind of cost is going to come with that? Just out of curiosity. Do you remember off the top of your head? $910. It, it should be on the contract. And you, it's $910. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's your, your Mr. Mayor, yep. may, I, yes. may I further address that? Sure. The contract also calls for if there are any other additional expenses that the city will be given written notice in advance of any expenditures going beyond the contract price. Thank you. Okay. Well, Mr. Reynolds, go ahead. Didn't we just have uh, a study on this just recently? It was in the paper for the Linden uh, intersection. Because it's, it's is that it was the right? It's a different intersection. Other part of Linden. Uh, uh, where uh, Mr. Uh, oh, I can't even say, but where the uh, speed sign is at now, right? Stop sign. Well, yeah. Okay. That's what this is for. Okay. The other one was for Main Church and, and, and Linden. Linden. Okay. And that was TCC that did that. Right. I just wanted to clarify. That was TCC it. did that for us. We have Mr. McIntyre, then we'll go to you. Michael yes. had my question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. We're bound by law to do this, correct? Since he filed a complaint on it. We have been advised. You're not bound by law, but it is. I would advise that you do it. Since he made a complaint. Well, that a car ended up in his yard. Yes, because okay. not, not the, just that he made a complaint, that there appears Mr. Kitko went out and investigated, and there appears to be a reason to further investigate. And so it is in the city's best interest to do that to keep this public safe. Thank you. And the reason we're doing this is he had cars hit twice. Is that correct? Yeah. He's had vehicles. Sure about that. Yeah, twice. Or, yard, I think twice he's had vehicles yeah. hit on that, and he's off the street, and that's where his house is, is on that corner. I believe. And I also thought he stated that vehicles had run up into the driveway of the. Uh, the old Studebaker property, mm -hmm. thinking it was continuation of the road and there could be a potential problem there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, people? Can I ask something real quick? You can, sir. Just stand up and we have already recognized you. Go what ahead. is the cost of this survey? $910 is what they just said. And that's for what, a week survey? Or? It's for an engineer to come out and give us recommendations of what to do on that corner. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, would you go ahead and call for the vote, please? Mr. Reynolds? No. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Uh, for the safety of the family, yes. Mayor McLaughlin? I have a question before I vote. But TCC, did we ask them to we try did. to look at it or whatever? We did. They, they, they declined it. it. They declined totally, and we belong to TCC, and they are not willing to do anything with it. Is that correct? I think one, it's going to be a lot more cost. They, they invest a lot more time into it. So that's Transportation Coordinating Committee uh, that did the other survey at the other end of this. So they're saying they are not willing to take that on. Uh, I would vote yes, again for safety. Mr. McIntyre. I, I can't vote no if it means somebody's family is not going to be safe and I, I couldn't tell somebody that died because we're trying to be too cheap, so I had to vote yes. Mr. Zambach. 
Uh, it's my understanding that an independent survey if it's recommended we make changes at that intersection would, if they do, this would carry more weight with uh, other government potential funding sources such as TCC, the County of Clark, or the State of Ohio, is that correct? I as opposed to how I write in a note saying, hey, we need to do something. Um, I'm not sure I understand your question. Right. Are you saying that if we get an engineer to give us a study that TCC will do another study? No, I'm saying that if we're going, you, the proposal is that we do uh -huh. get an engineer to right. do a study. Right. We then take the results of that study and it would enhance our possibilities of getting funding for changes to that intersection. Um, I'm not sure. That's a residential intersection. It's it's purely a residential street. Since it does connect any state route, we don't get any special funding um, from any kind of federal or state sources for that type of project. So it's, it's really on our own nickel anyway. And you could actually go out there and say, this is pretty much what we need to do, and, and we could take it from there, because it's going to be on our own nickel regardless. Is that correct? It, if I'm following you right, are you saying if I wrote a letter to say it needs well, certain things, or compared to an engineer saying it needs? What, what is the engineer going to determine that you couldn't? Um, probably with his, uh, his license stamp as an engineer, um, if he was be taken, or taken into a, uh, a hearing, um, he is he is a professionally certified engineer to, who does traffic. This guy is a specialized in traffic study. I mean, I read the um, the state manual on traffic signals, signage, speed bumps, all that. But I'm not saying I'm the resident expert on a specific crash type scenario. This, this is all right. You answered more questions. This is a situation that requires more expertise than we have, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yes, yes. I vote yes. Pass six to one. Thank you. You would read the next ordinance, please. It's a uh, introduction. Ordinance fifteen dash ten, introduction, public hearing, and action on three six three sixteen fifteen, an ordinance authorizing the leasing of Gasano Baseball Field, property of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, to the Diamondbacks Adult Baseball Club. Thank you. Now we're into other business. Is there other business council you'd like to speak on? Anyone at this point? Mr. I just want to give a special thanks to all the city workers who went out there and did some plowing um, on my street. We had a lot of a lot of snow and there's not a lot of uh, uh, driveways. And so people park on the street and trying to get out on this weekend, nobody could move their car. And the, the one city employee, whose name I can't remember, and he's going to kill me because he remembers my name, but he, he got out of his, got out of the plow and was helping push people to get them free, and I really think that's above and beyond. Um, I know that they're trying to get the city clean and get things plowed and to just take that step and make sure that people could get about safely. Um, I was going to visit my father for his birthday. He's had a stroke and not doing well, and I was able to get to the birthday party because he helped me get free. So big thank you to all the city employees who got out there and made sure the roads were safe. Good, thank you. They have done a good job. Council, anything else? Yes, Mr. Creelon. I want to thank everybody for coming. You know, this is what city, you know, I call it small town politics, but however, small town po politics has gotten to big town. You know, and yes, we do, we have to, different standards for corporations. I've owned corporations or I've had that side of it too. So if it was me, I'd probably walk in and say, you're fired too, but you can't. You know, it's just, but there's certain things that we can do, and we're, we're working on that. Okay, but I want to thank everybody for coming and thank for voicing your opinion. We need that. We really do need that. Sometimes, you know, we just need a little good talking to. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Who said yes? Mr. Mack? I'm sorry, Mr. Frayton. Uh, Zambach. Mr. Zambach. Uh, yeah. Please. <laughs> I'll get him right. We're aware we have a problem. We want to solve the problem. We are going to do that directly. I mentioned that in our last council meeting. We had a communication problem. We need to resolve it. And that's what we have is a communication problem. We're going to fix it. And we're going to tell you what we did and how it will work. 
that's what you put us up here for, those that live in the city and vote. I couldn't resist, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, they're the ones that put us here, the voters. And all we're going to do is we're going to fix the problem as best we can. That's, we are going to devote more time to it. We're not shirking in any way, shape, or form. First, you got to realize you got a problem. Then you got to identify the specifics, and then you got to fix the broken parts. And that's what we're going to do. And once it's done, our communication problem should be significantly less. <coughs> Mr. Rivers. I agree with everyone up here. We need to do the investigation. We need to do it in a tactful and respectful way, and make sure that we find out what happened and how it happened, and the who, what, where's, when, and why. And I, I totally agree with all of you all about that. So. And I think that that's what we'll be doing over the next few days or weeks or how long it takes. We find out every question. That's, yeah, that's all I have. And I believe we're going to start that procedure this evening in our Thank executive you. And there's Mr. Lowry. <clears throat> Anyone else, Mr. Lowry? Did you want to speak? No. Oh, okay. we're good. Oh, I thought you raised your hand. I thought you saw you raise your hand. Sorry no, about that. I was looking at Dick because we had talked about something and he chose to say what he said. And I'm good with it. Okay, anyone else counsel anything? Mr. Mayor, can I make a comment, sir? I know we're out of the sure, public sir. time zone, but can I make a quick comment, sir? Yes, sir, please go ahead. The comment I made about firing the city manager this evening, I am smart enough to know because I've been in city government in bigger cities in New Carlisle. I know you can't walk over a discharger tonight. Uh, I know there has to be an investigation. It's not a corporation. Uh, corporation, she'd be gone. Uh, in a corporation, you could probably be gone if they voted, the board voted you off, right? In a corporation. Uh, city don't work like that. So uh, I just wanted to, I guess it's let you the city council know that I wasn't just shooting off the mouth. I do know that there's procedures to get rid of somebody as high as a city manager. I also know that the city manager is ultimately the one that runs this city, but she also works at the pleasure of council. Any city, any council. They work with the pleasure of council. That's all I have, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for clearing it up for us. We appreciate it. In the audience. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, audience, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. We still have a couple of things to read. I just wanted to thank you. Thank you for all the comments. It's a little heated sometimes, but that's what government is about. Again, I want to stress everybody up here has the city welfare in its mind, in its heart, believe me. We wouldn't be here if we didn't thought that the pay is great or anything of that nature. We want to be involved, and we are involved. And we will investigate, do what we need to do at that point, and we will go forward. Thank you again for all of you being here tonight. And uh, now we have some other things to read, and we'll go forward. If you would, go ahead, sir. City offices will be closed on Friday, April the 3rd for Good Friday. There will be a joint government meeting Monday, March the 30th, 2015 at 6.30. That will be held at Tecumseh High School. And a reminder that that meeting is open to the public. Uh, there will be a crime watch meeting on uh, Wednesday, March the 11th, 2015 at 6.30 here at Smith Park Shelter House. And we need a motion to go into executive session. Uh, we do. I should read it first and then okay. the motion. Uh, we're having an executive session tonight to consider investigation of complaint against the public, public employee. And we need a motion, please, to go into executive session. So moved. Is that a second? Who seconded? Dick seconded. Do you call for the vote, please? Mr. Reynolds? No. Mm. Did, you, did you say no? Yes, I said no. <laughs> Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Yeah. Passed six to one. Six to one to go into executive session. Uh, now I need to read this as a courtesy to the audience. The presiding officer, which would be me, should announce that any additional business is anticipated at the executive session if an executive session is held, and we don't anticipate any other business to happen after the executive session. So with that, we will return to, uh, well, we have to return later, don't we, to? 
we Session. clear the room at this point. We we'll clear the room at this point. So that is the uh, end of the meeting. It's part of the executive session. We'll Five take minutes. a 10-minute. We'll Five take minutes. a 10-minute despite, then we'll go into executive session. Thank you. Bye.